Hello everyone and welcome to the roundup going into week three. We are going to round up the biggest pieces of news and the best fantasy analysis from Fantasy Life to make sure you dominate your fantasy leagues this weekend. There's a lot of injuries to get into. There's a lot of teams to break down. So let's get started. Here's something we all knew was going to happen. Head coach Sean McVay for the Rams was going to be trading Cam Akers. And on Wednesday, that happened. Wednesday afternoon, they traded Cam Akers to the Minnesota Vikings for a 2026 six and a 2026 seventh round pick. But do we really believe a new change of scenery for Cam Akers is going to make him better? So now let's look at this Minnesota Vikings offense and see how Cam Akers could fit into the equation. I want to point one thing out though on the Cisco Pro Board 75. It's right here. Rush yards, number 32. Right now the Minnesota Vikings have only 69 rushing yards, which is obviously the fewest in the NFL and the fewest through two games by any team since the 2019 Bengals and Dolphins. So we're kind of asking ourselves, is Cam Akers an upgrade over Alexander Madison? And I would say maybe not. Alexander Madison has negative 22 rush yards over expected. But I will say Cam Akers, negative 41. And this Minnesota Vikings team is the only team in the NFL without a rush attempt of 10 plus yards. So it's not looking great. But is he an upgrade? We'll see. I think the biggest winner here, though, is Kyron Williams running back for the Rams. He is now RB1 and someone I hope you got. There are some trends that have been developing going into week three of the NFL season, but are they real or are they fake? Ian Harditz wrote this piece on fantasylife.com. And one thing all Justin Fields managers know to be true is that he is not running the football like he did last year. In fact, he only has four designed rush attempts going into week three, and that is nothing we want to see. But is this trend real or is it fake? Is it going to continue or could it stop in week three? Now, here's the thing with Justin Fields. It's true that his progression as a passer has not developed like some would have hoped, but not featuring his rushing ability does make things a little bit confusing. Right now, you can see over here, Justin Fields has 29.2 fantasy points on the season, which makes him QB 21. Now, here's hoping that him and offensive coordinator Luke Getze get things going in week three against the Kansas City Chiefs, which is a tough matchup, but it can be done. And here's hoping that this hug from practice is a good sign of all things to come. There have been a lot of injuries through the first two weeks of the season, and maybe some player situations just aren't going to get better quick enough to help your fantasy team. So it pains Dwayne McFarland to say this, but it might be time to sell high on this wide receiver. Let's watch. All of the factors pushing us to sell on Garrett Wilson are all external. They don't come back to him. And we hate that sort of scenario, the challenge is I don't see a way this gets better for the Jets this season. There are just too many obstacles stacked against the young wide receiver. Guys, this isn't good. We can go over to the utilization tools on fantasylife.com, which you can see for free, and we can click on team styles and see that the Jets drop back rate over expectation is actually minus 7%. In fact, last week against the Cowboys, with them trailing by four plus points or more on 76% of snaps, 76%, they were still minus 4% and drop back rate over expectation. That is creating major challenges. They are only averaging 49 plays per game. So that ranks second worst in the NFL for plays per game. And then we know they want to try and run the ball. So they rank third worst in dropbacks per game. Even if Garrett Wilson continues to stay on the field for a 98% route participation with his 20% targets per route run he has so far this year, that would put him on pace for 100 targets in a 17 game season. I think we can all agree on one thing with this Los Angeles Rams team in that it is a fantasy gold mine. You've got Puka Nakua, wide receiver two, Kyron Williams, RB2, and Tutu Atwell, wide receiver 15. But is this offense that good? The answer is yes. So let's talk about just how good this Rams offense is in fantasy land right now. I am on the utilization report tool, fantasylife.com, using the Cisco Pro Board 75, and I want to hit on Puka Nakua. This 39% target share is the highest in the NFL through two games. So right now, Puka Nakua is a low-end wide receiver one, but when Cooper Cup comes back, he will go down to that wide receiver two range, but Puka Nakua is just doing incredible things right now. 
And now I want to go and hit on the running backs for the Los Angeles Rams, specifically Kyron Williams, of course. Kyron Williams in week one had a pretty good week, right? 38% of the rush attempts, but it was still mostly handled by Cam Akers. Now that Cam Akers is out of the equation, look at what Kyron Williams did in week two. He had 78% of the rush attempts. He had an 80% route participation. So all good things are coming for Kyron Williams. He had 28 fantasy points in week two. That's the Kyron Williams we can expect now that Cam Akers is fully out of the picture. If you're not playing on underdog, then let this be the best introduction for you before you get absolutely hooked. Make sure you go to underdogfantasy.com to sign up and they will match your deposit of up to $100 if you use the promo code LIFE. So make sure you head over there, but now let's build our pick em slips going into week three. So now that I'm logged into my underdog fantasy account, I do want to go and make a pick em slip for the weekend. Pick em is super easy, everyone. All you have to do is pick higher or lower than the player total, and that's how you do it. So I want to start with the Chargers Minnesota Vikings game because this is the highest total on the weekend sitting over there at 54. We know that Austin Eckler is also out for this game. So I want to go higher on Keenan Allen, 13.85 fantasy points. I think they obviously have have to attack through the year, and I think Keenan Allen is going to be a big beneficiary of that. I also do think that Joshua Kelly has a better week three, so if that's something that you're looking into, I do think he has a better week this week with Austin Eckler out. Next game I want to go to is New Orleans and Green Bay. I'm really excited for this Saints team, first of all. I think this is a really good trio of receivers. I think that Rashid Shahid is going to have a great game. Jordan Love is who I want to pinpoint here. I think this is the time Jordan Love goes over interceptions, has his first interception on the season. I think that this team is going to give him some fits. And so I am going higher than 0.5 interceptions for Jordan Love. Last one I want to add, Houston at Jacksonville. Now this is going to be, oh man, this is going to be a tough one for Houston and I understand that. That's why we're going to the other side of the ball. I want to see Travis Etienne here. I think I'm going to go over higher than 69.5 rushing yards. We have him projected at Fantasy Life for 88 rushing yards on the day. He had two big games against them last year, so I think that's going to follow through. I'm almost thinking about the over rushing and receiving touchdowns, but I'm going to leave that one. And there we go. We've got our three right here. I think I'm going to put 10 on it. So if you want to go, make sure you go underdogfantasy.com and try and tail this pick'em slip. All right, everyone, that was the roundup for week three. Thank you so much for watching. We really appreciate it. Make sure you go out, set those lineups, go to fantasylife.com because that will have everything you need to dominate your fantasy week this week, and it is all 100% free. So go check it out, and good luck this weekend.